The system right here blew my mind. I've just got back from flying this thing and it far exceeded any expectations I had. This is a new Artlink system in the Aquila 20. If you're into cheap digital FPV, it is shaping up for 2026 to completely revolutionize what we expect in our hobbies. Look at that image. Remember, this is like the cheapest system that there is for digital. Man, I don't know, like that's, that's amazing. G'day, Stu from UOV Futures, and you can probably tell from that intro that I am pumped for this product. What I'm about to show you here, this new system, like look at this, I'm just gonna put some stuff on the screen. This is a cheap system that I was already impressed with some other new competitors on the market, but from B to FPV, we have the Aquila 20, which is all bind and fly, but the important part in this video that you're going to see the next system that is really gonna shake up our FPV scene, the Artlink. Inside here, we've got some artisan tech and it is next level impressive for the price. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna talk about the kit because I do still need to talk about the radio and the actual drones itself, but the big one, you're gonna see just how capable this system is. You're gonna see the lack of like breakup that I had, some penetration, some range testing with this that I did not expect at all. I had my expectations, they were smashed and then some important parts to note as well. We do need to talk about some fragmentation and what this means for a hobby going forward. We have so many choices now, but those choices are gonna matter more than ever. So let's do it. Let's break the system down. And most importantly, you just wait until you see the flight footage, the actual visuals from this cheap FPV system. Digital system, cheap digital system. Now look, because I respect your time, I'm gonna break down the goggles. I'll talk about the drone and the radio itself a little bit, but the important part, I wanna talk about the actual FPV system in here. And towards the end of the video, I'll go through some of the more nuanced things that you need to be aware of, plus some of the other extras. But the important part here, these are the new goggles and we also have inside here is, I think it's the PX1 or Artisan, I'll put a picture on the screen, the new VTX. It can do 60 frames per second at 1080p. It has, I think, 60 milliseconds of latency. These box goggles right here are a bit of a mix between old and new tech. This is the first time that I've seen Beta FPV enter the digital space. We're gonna turn them on the back right here. Let me just plug a drone battery in as well so you can see exactly how this goes. All right, so you can see in here, one thing I do really like, the menu is really intuitive. I only have access to four channels, which is a different limitation to some other systems like DJI and Walk Snail, analog and those sorts of things. But it was really easy to go through, change all your settings when it's actually sitting on your face. We'll talk about this as well. Um, you are gonna get some light leakage. The actual goggle design and the feeling of this thing, it is not my favorite, but where this is just leagues above everything else in cheap digital, is the performance and that's the part that I want to show you. So we're going to do that right now. You're going to see me go out to the field. We will come and talk about these other parts. We're going to go fly this around and let me just show you the digital experience that you can expect from a cheap system. This entire kit is $350 or 360 US dollars. That's drone, radio, batteries, uh, chargers, goggles. We're doing it differently because you need to see this video system. So let's go out to the field and you'll see me flying this cheap kit around and what you can expect from this new art link. So let's do that in three, two, one. Boop. Radio out here in the field. Let's do it. A budget entry HD system. It's in the Aquila 20. What I'm really excited about is how does this perform? What's it gonna be like compared to the Cadex Ascent? And I have to say, it is a perfect day for testing. So let's fly around this budget VTX system, find out just how well it goes. We'll talk about the goggles, we'll talk about the drone and the radio, but most importantly, let's check out this new entry into like the world of digital FPV. Now, before we take off, I must say, everything about this system, like you might've seen a little bit on the bench, it feels a little bit less refined. So these sort of box goggles, they're not as comfortable as the Ascent but I have flown a little bit around the digital system and that's the part I'm really excited for. So let's simply slide this in the back here. Um, I think that's it. Like you don't get that nice snapping, that nice click that comes with some of the Cadex system. All right, let's turn that on, turn my radio on, turn my goggles on, which is this button back here. Look at that, pure, nothing but professional. I think I've, I think I've turned them on. Uh, yes, there we go. Getting beeps all over the place. This should be booting up and there we go. I am, and what I do like actually is how easy it is to use though. So I found the menu system in here. Like I've already, I knew exactly where record was. That part does feel very intuitive. So we're in standby mode at the moment. So it does feel a little bit jittery, but let's take this thing off, rip around and just have some fun. So uh, I do get a little bit of light leakage, like actually a lot of light leakage coming in here. It is a big screen as well. 
Like the arming is a little bit weird as well. And you notice as soon as I do that, the picture clears up to get it out of that standby mode section. All right, let's go here. Oh, what am I stuck on? Stuck on some grass. There we go. All right, now, this is the part that straight away, like you're just gonna be blown, your mind is gonna be blown that this is a beginner system for this FPV. The drone I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but I'm so excited for this because especially compared to Ascent, having 200 milliwatts in here, and if I look at the breakup and how this handles, this is like, this is so good for a budget entry. And we haven't even spoken about like the whole kit or anything. And this at the moment is the only way to get that. But the art link system that is in here, like it is gorgeous for the price that you are paying. You're still gonna see some artifacts and everything. And I must mention as well, when I looked at some previous DVR of this flying around my house, it looks better in the goggles. I don't know how to explain that, but yeah, in the sky, when I'm actually here cruising around, let's have a look at some break up here behind these trees, behind these uh, earth mounds. That is extremely good where we would have lost, lost the CADEX system there with the ascent anyways. So on first impressions, or I should say like very early impressions, because I have flown a few packs, this is incredible. Uh, we should probably talk about the radio. The radio feels cheap. I prefer something like the T8L. It feels very, very similar to, again, to the Protoss remote. I don't think that's the, uh, the fancy part. The goggles themselves, I can feel it resting on my nose. I am getting some light leakage. But for a beginner entry goggle, the really important part, it looks gorgeous, but I am also, it's very loud. Uh, I'm not feeling cross-eyed, which is a major problem I find with some other goggles out there. Now, let's see if we can do a little bit of a punch out with the drone itself. So yeah, the, the drone itself, it's not gonna be made for races. It's not gonna be doing any crazy freestyle. Let's see if we can uh, do some, oh, look at that. Like a nice little orbit through the trees. And also too, like very little carbon, I think, if any, in this actual frame. What? Let's go for a fly out here. Let's test just how well it can go what we can see in terms of actual image breakup. Let's see if we can push this to its limits, cruising out down here. And remember, this is like the cheapest system that there is for digital. Okay, we're starting to, man, I don't know, like that's, that's amazing. Oh, I've got one bar of reception. Okay, it's getting a little bit blocky. I do feel a little bit of latency. Let's uh, see if we can head back now, see if the picture starts to clear up. Those ghost branches, hard to see. But like you guys look at this, you are gonna get some smearing in the greens and the grasses and you are gonna get some blockiness. But what I really wanna stress is, this is like the cheapest we have ever seen digital. And I'm getting such a better experience than I did with the Protoss. I really liked the Protoss for what it did. I didn't like its latency and it had a little bit of room to uh, improve, I guess, in terms of the actual image transmission. But this ArtLink system is stellar. It really is a star of this whole kit. The actual drone itself, it's not gonna be winning any awards. That part's like just fairly standard base little beginner kit that's gonna get people flying. What is gonna keep people flying on this system is this video. I mean, check this out. Let, let's have a look at some of this detail up here. I am I'm also conscious of the battery. Look at that image. Look at this. This is a budget entry system. So, all right, I'm gonna bring it in. Let's, let's actually, let's do some speed here. Let's see how well we go. Um, oh, I just had my heart just sank, sank that I wasn't recording in the goggles. It is, thank goodness. Thank goodness the menu's really easy and intuitive to get around here. Um, I'm looking at the battery. I'm gonna see, see how we go. You don't need to adjust the camera angle. Woo! All right, I'm gonna bring this in. And let's, let's go for a nice little landing. Some okay flight times too. Beautiful. Stop my DVR, my DVR's auto stopped because that's what I set in the men, in the goggles. Now, if anywhere, I feel like I'm gonna have a mark just here. Do I have any marks? You see anything here? Slight one, yeah. Slight one. It is resting. I can feel that pressing down. It's nothing like my DJI's, which they do feel a little bit tighter. Uh, I think the N3s are one of the best box goggles. 
It's heavier, it feels like on my face, than the Cadex walk snail systems and the Ascent systems. But I want to make this really clear. Where this shines, it is that Art Link. That Art Link system has legs, has real serious chances to give people a great flying FPV experience. You can say what you like about radios. These parts, all the hardware can be changed in terms of how this is in the hands and the ergonomics. This actual drone, in what the video you are getting back in terms of latency, in terms of penetration, in terms of range, and with a crazy price, it's shaping up to just be incredible in 2026 for us FPV pilots. Look, you do have some other sensors. Oh, there we go. This is beeping all over the place. You can set this so it's like in self-level mode, a whole bunch of little things. That doesn't really interest me so much. It is more the system that I wanted to look at today. I will be doing some more tests as well, comparing it against some other systems. I want to do some stuff with Ascent versus this. But for like first impressions on a system like this, this is exactly what we need. Now, here's the problem. The price, 360 bucks, is outstanding. Like I, it really is, I think, the best value kit that we have. This is what I would spend my money on as a base entry kit. I would choose this over the Ascent, purely based on what the video performance is like and the potential for that in the future. But there's a bit of a problem as well. So if you are thinking before you go and buy this, wait till we jump back to the studio because I wanna show you some things that you definitely need to take into consideration. It's not as clear cut. It is wide open now between DJI HD0, CADEX, like Ascent. We've also got this system now with the Artlink. It's, it's great, but we need to talk about some things and fragmentation as well. Now I've got something really important to show you. I don't know if this is gonna come through after the video edits, but when I put the raw DVR file, I get like some green images on my screen in Premiere Pro. It's not there when I like reconvert the file. So I don't know what that is, but the DVR that you are seeing right now doesn't do the system justice at all. It's the footage that you would have seen before. So yeah, if you see this popping up, I feel like maybe it's an issue with how my computer handles Kodaks. None of this appears in the goggles. In the goggles, it looks stellar, but it's worth mentioning that in the review. Sharing the DVR on my computer doesn't seem to be as easy. So now, what did you think of that? Like for my experience flying that around, it was leagues better than the Protoss system. Bumping this up and being able to go to 200 milliwatts makes such a difference on these cheap end systems. I would get the best results going from 25 to 100 on the ascent. Going up to 200 milliwatts here, like you saw the penetration, you saw the range, it is outstanding. And that's been my number one critique and the thing that I would like to change on a lot of these budget systems was how do they feel when it starts to get the break up? It can all look amazing, but as soon as it starts to flicker or disappear, us pilots don't want that. The Artisan Link, this system did not do that. I could fly this thing around comfortably. You can tell just how excited I am about this product right here. So let's probably break it down a little bit more. The drone itself, look, it does have some sensors. You can fly this in some different ways, different level modes, all that sort of stuff. It does feel a little bit cheap. The plastic in here, it's not my favorite. Everything in this kit feels a little bit unrefined in comparison to something like the Protoss, which let's be honest, is its biggest competitor. It is basically the same price. That system there felt a lot more streamlined. The plastics just felt a lot nicer. The finishes felt a lot nicer. This does feel like a cheaper toy when you are holding it in your hands. The goggles feel like a cheaper set of goggles. The radio, to be honest, the radio probably feels, if not maybe a little bit better, but feels very, very similar to the other ones on the market as well. The charger, I do not like, uh, especially when you to charge something, you have to plug it in and then make sure you turn your battery on because when I first had this, I'd had this charging waiting forever. It wasn't until I was like, maybe I need to turn the battery, actually activate it before it'll start charging. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a safety thing, but look, it, it annoyed me a little. But yeah, the charger, you can only charge one at once as well. So, oh, and you only get two batteries in your kit. But overall, the thing that is the most exciting, the Art Link system inside here. That range, that penetration, the visuals, everything that you get was a stellar flight experience for the price. The value to the FPV feed is next level. And here's the important part. I'm not telling you to go and buy this. You can make your own mind up about that. There's probably some affiliates linked down below. If you don't like that, you can simply Google this and get it. And you might say, Stuart, I'd prefer to punch you in the face and support your channel. Good for you. If you do want to use the links down below, thank you very much. It does support the channel. But here's who needs to hear this. Should you get this kit? And the answer, it's probably not for us everyday FPV pilots. If you already have a